XLOOKUP is an awesome feature of Excel, but there are times when we need more than what XLOOKUP can give us. So in this video, we're going to look at five alternatives to XLOOKUP that you should have in your Excel tool belt. So let's get to it. So in this first example, we have this list of customers over here, and we're going to look up each of these customers in this customer list and return the contact name. Now we're going to use alternatives to XLOOKUP, but I'm first just going to write a quick XLOOKUP to show how this works. So I'll write equals XLOOKUP. Our lookup value is going to be the customer here. We'll type a comma. We're going to look that up in the customer name column, comma, and then we want to return the contact name, comma. If it's not found, I'm just going to type two quotation marks there for blanks, close parentheses, and hit enter. And since we're using an Excel table, that will fill down all of the results. If you're not familiar with Excel tables yet, I do have another video that explains them in more detail. I'll link that up in the description. And I should also note that all of these solutions I show today also work with regular ranges. So for our first alternative, we might want to know which row number each of these contacts is in within this table. For that, we can use the XMatch function. So I'm going to start typing XMatch. We'll tab into that. The lookup value again is going to be the customer here. We'll type a comma. And then the lookup array is going to be the customer name column. That's all we need for this X match function. We'll hit enter. That's going to expand my table and return these numbers. And X match is really doing the same thing as X lookup. It's looking for this value down this column right here. And when it finds that matching result, instead of returning another value, it's just going to return the row number. So this is the fourth row here of that table. And one pro tip here, if you wanted the row number of the sheet, I'm going to copy this XLOOKUP and paste it right here. XLOOKUP actually returns a range. So we can wrap it in the row function. Let's we'll type row and tab into that and close parentheses out at the end. And when we do that, that's going to return the row number of the result of the XLOOKUP for the sheet. So we can now see that this is row 9. Now, one issue with XLOOKUP is it stops at the first match. If we want to figure out how many matches there are, we can use the count if function. So the count if has two arguments. The range is the range of cells that we want to look in. And then the criteria is the matching result. So we're just going to say that we're looking for this value in this column over here. And that's going to give us a count of the number of matches. And if there aren't any matches, it's going to return a zero. So this is a really simple formula that can give us more information than just an XLOOKUP alone to quickly check if matching values exist. Now, what if we wanted to see all of these results here? Because we have more than one result, we might want to see that information. I'm going to hit Control Plus here a few times to give us a few extra columns. And right here in this column, we're going to use the filter function. So we're going to start typing equals filter. We'll tab into that. Another relatively simple function here. The array is the information that we want to return. So we want to return the contact name. So we'll reference that column, comma, the include. This is our filter criteria. So we want to take the customer name column and say where that is equal to. So we'll put it equals here, where that is equal to uh, this customer in this row. And that's really all we need. We can type uh, if empty. So I'll put two quotes there at the end for if empty. Just return a blank close parentheses and hit enter, and that's going to return both of the matching results. So again, XLOOKUP returned the first result, filter will return all of the results here in a spill range, and we can see that we have multiple people for this one customer. Now, the reason I didn't initially put this formula in the table or next to the table is because when we do that, I'm just going to copy the formula and paste it here. You can see that we get all of these spill errors. And that's because formulas can't spill in tables, and also because this formula down here would be blocking the formula that's spilling above. But fortunately, there is a workaround for this. I'm going to first go ahead and just delete the formula here. And we can just wrap this with the array to text function. So array to text, we'll tab into that. And that's all we need is the uh, argument here. The array is the filter formula. So we'll just close parentheses on that. And that's going to automatically do a comma delimited value here for the results. If you want to separate the values by something other than a comma, you can also use the text join function here. Next, we're going to look at a different scenario where we have two lists of volunteers, one from last year and one from this year. And we want to do some lookups here to see who volunteered uh, last year that's currently volunteering this year, and who's volunteering this year that didn't volunteer last year. 
So for this, we could use a couple of COUNTIF functions or any of the other functions we looked at to kind of do lookups on both tables. But there's actually an easier solution for this. So what I'm first going to do is in this 2024 table, I'm going to add a column and call it year. And then right here, I'm going to hit Control Shift Down Arrow to select all the cells in the table, type in 2024 and hold uh, Control and hit Enter. And that's going to copy that value down to all the selected cells. Then I'm going to take this data from the 2025 table. I'm going to copy that. And I'm going to paste it to the bottom of this table. Again, I'm going to go over here, Control Shift Down Arrow to select all these blank cells. 2025 and control enter. So now I have the data stacked on top of each other. And for this, we're going to use a pivot table. So we're going to go insert tab here and choose pivot table. First, select any cell inside this table, insert pivot table. We'll put that on a new sheet. And then for this pivot table, we're going to put the year in the columns area. So that's going to allow us to compare the year over year. We're going to put the email in the rows area. That's going to give us a list of all of the emails for uh, the entire table. And then we can also take email and put it in the values area to get a count of the number of emails for each year. So this instantly gives us a quick report that shows all the data we need. We can see that this person volunteered both years. This person only volunteered in 2025, but since there's a blank for 2024, they did not volunteer this year down here, vice versa, where they volunteered in 2024, but not 2025. Now, the reason I use the email address in the rows area here is because this is a unique value. We could potentially have the same name for multiple people, but we wouldn't have the same email address for multiple people. And if you did want to see the name here, you could also add that to the rows area. But the reason I like using a pivot table for this type of scenario is because it allows us to quickly create this summary report without having to write any complex formulas. And it can also handle more than two data sets. So when we get data next year, all we need to do is add that to the bottom of the table, go over to our pivot table, right click refresh, keyboard shortcut is Alt F5. That will instantly update with the new year and we can quickly analyze the data. In this example, we have this table of sales data. We have this product ID column here and we want to look that up in this products table over here to return the product name and category. Now, of course, we could use a lookup formula for this, but instead we're going to use Power Query. So I'm going to select any cell inside this table, go to the Data tab. We're going to choose From, Table, or Range. That's going to open up the Power Query editor and show a preview of our data. Now, in Power Query, this lookup is called a Merge. So on the Home tab here, we're going to click the Merge Queries button. That'll open up the Merge window, and we're going to select our table and matching columns. So we need the Product ID column from our Sales table. I've already loaded in our products table, so we'll select that here and also select the product ID. So we've selected the two matching columns. Power Query tells us that we have the selection matches 661 of 661 rows. So we have some matches, we'll hit OK. That's gonna add a new column here to our table and we can click this expand button. And from here, I'm just gonna uncheck product ID because we don't need to return the product ID since we already have it. We'll uncheck use original call name as prefix and hit OK. And that's going to return the product name and product category columns here to the query. And the merge is basically doing the same thing as a lookup. So we'll go home tab here, close and load. That's going to create a new sheet in the workbook and output the results. And again, I like this solution with Power Query because it doesn't require us to write or maintain any complex formulas. And this might also be part of a larger data cleanup process. So I'm curious to know which of these techniques you'll be using in your work. Leave a comment below and let us know. And if you wanna learn more about Power Query, we have an in-depth training program called the Power Query Pro Course. I'll link that up in the description below. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button and consider subscribing. Thanks again for watching. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.